never compare yourself to anybody else. It's the hardest thing to do and the easiest thing to say. I think when you start working on your self-esteem and any other personal help books, you know, uh, for personal growth books can help you through this. And there are courses and classes and all kinds of things that support that can help you is that you get to be you. You are so lucky that you get to be you. You know, I mean, if you take a look at the statistics, it's like one in a gajillion that, you know, when the, when the sperm hit the egg, you were going to turn out to be you. And so uh, I often say that the divine source, God, Buddha, whoever it is you may believe in, uh, you know, they knew exactly what they were doing when they were creating you. And so it's not up to you to be deciding or second guessing what, what, what their thought was when you were created, just be the best you that you can possibly be. And I know that's really hard. It sounds really, you know, there are words that come out of your mouth easily, but, um, you know, you, when you're not living your truth and, and life seems to be like a plain, painful place to be, this is when you know there's some work that needs to be done. And a lot of these things come from the natal tribe, right? They're from our childhood. They're the things that we're taught. When we start to move on in our path, you know, we were out of that tribe. We understand that the things are way different than what we were taught. At least in my case, it was. Give me an example of that, because this is one of the things that we talk a lot about in on this podcast is, you know, the conditioning from childhood, how that affects your current experience. But like for you, how did you find that that, that like do you have a, a tangible example? Because not everybody was a, well, not everybody was an alcoholic, and yeah. not everybody was. Alcoholic. Not everybody was violent. Um, so, uh, and not every household yelled and screamed to get their points across, you know. Not every household was Irish Catholic and extremely, you know, very, very severe in the upbringing. So when I got out there, it, was, it took me a while to understand that there were softer ways that, that, you know, that you could, in which you could communicate, which was a really, it was super eye-opening for me. Um, yeah. And that, you know, you didn't have to drink for courage and that you didn't have to be, hit somebody to get your point across. Uh, you didn't have to live in violence. And so, you know, for me, which is very important for me, is also my collaboration with DomesticShelters.org, for example, which is headquartered here in the States, uh, in Phoenix, and they help women all over the United States uh, get out of, uh, you know, very, very uh, difficult situations. So, yeah, this was really tangible for me is when I moved out, went, wow. And it takes a while, by the way, uh, Amira, it takes a while for somebody to, whoa, when you start seeing the difference and starting to be able to where you, where you're programmed to where you want to be, it takes a while in that growth and that personal growth to be able to go from point A to point B. Yeah. So talk to me about that. So like, clearly that upbringing had an in, in, incredibly impactful impression on yeah. you. How did it help you? I know that's like a twist on things. How did it help you with, say, having the courage to go on Celebrity Survivor or having the courage to be out there in front of the camera and putting you yourself out there in the, the modeling world? Like, how did it help? How did it hurt? Give me both. Well, I think, you know, first of all, I was, I was a very out, uh, you know, outgoing child. I was already Mary Poppins in the kindergarten play. To give you an idea. So the a microphone on the stage, I knew at an early age was always going to be in my life in some way, shape, or form, because I was hooked from the first applause. I sang super califragilistic expialidocious. I got a huge applause and I went, this is going to be my life. <laughs> so with that having been said, uh, the idea that it would help me, I think what, you know, the idea there is I just didn't want to live that kind of life. I didn't want to live cloistered, imprisoned, oppressed. Um, and the best way that you could possibly uh, be the absolute op- uh, opposite is to be on stage, right? <laughs> is, to, is to go get the applause. You don't get the applause at home. You know, you might as well find them somewhere else. And, you know, we're all looking for approval. I think that's also, uh, that's human 101. We love approval, all of us. And so my earliest experience of that was the approval of the, the of applause from complete strangers. But it was enough to, you know, to get me through. It took me a while after being Mary Poppins in the kindergarten play. And I was in the bands and the choirs and the drill teams and all of that. My parents were never there. They never came to see me. So I was marching down Main Street on the 4th of July parade. My parents never showed up. So I learned at a very early age that, you know, as much as I love the attention, you know, it was great. This is probably where I was going to be garnering attention. It wasn't going to be in the natal home. Back to what I said. What you learn there is what you take on the path uh, forward. So take what serves you. They did what they could with the tools in the shed that they had at the time. 
They were children having children. My mother was 19, just into 19 when I was born. And they did what they could with the best tools they they had. So, you know, I think that that was lesson 101. I'm here. I was, you know, your parents are perfect and that you need, they need to be forgiven and you need to thank them for what they were able to give you. Then you move on, you put on some big girl panties, you move on and, and you, you front this thing called life. 